There's a hypothesis that's been around since 1980. You'd know a lot more than me, the bovine milk hypothesis on type yeah. 1 diabetes. Yeah, molecular mimicry. Where does that stand? Yeah, there's actually a significant amount of research on that. Um, there's this process called molecular mimicry, which basically means that when you eat protein that has a similar epitope, so basically like a fragment of the protein that resembles, that's very close, that has a very similar amino acid sequence to protein inside of your own body. So you have your own endogenous mammalian protein, and then you have this uh, exogenous mammalian protein that you consume. And the two of them are so closely linked to each other that if that epitope has a couple of things have to happen. Number one, the protein has to get basically partially digested inside of your immune, inside of your digestive system. And then it has to escape into circulation. And the only way that it can get into circulation is if there's basically like uh, permeability inside of your small intestine. Okay. So if you have a permeable gut, then what will end up happening is that these protein fragments will end up escaping effectively into your blood. If you don't have a permeable gut, then the protein fragments cannot escape into your gut or they escape in very small quantities and they don't elicit a reaction because what's supposed to happen is that these protein fragments that are like 10, 15, 20 amino acids in length actually have to get cut into either one, two, or three amino acids in length. So either single peptide, or sorry, single amino acid, a dipeptide, or a tripeptide. And when they're in that small of a peptide chain, then the epithelial cells inside of your gut can absorb them and then process them and put them into circulation. But what ends up happening is that when you have this, you know, quote unquote, leaky gut or perforated gut, then these protein fragments end up escaping. So if they get inside of your bloodstream, then these protein fragments are now floating in your blood. Your immune system recognizes and was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, I didn't make that. That is not from me. That is not from a human. Let me go let me go mount an immune response. So the immune response begins, but the problem is that th those protein fragments are so closely related to other protein fragments. In the case of type 1 diabetes, there's proteins that are on the outside of the, the extracellular matrix of the, of the beta cells. And so the, uh, your immune system is so good at recognizing these protein that it actually mistakens the extracellular proteins on the beta cells for the protein fragments that came from your food. And now you have a reaction which basically is called autoimmune, and that's where you create autoantibodies against those particular protein fragments. And now you have this 24-7, uh, um, you have a 24-7 autoimmune process, which then labels the, um, what do you call them, the beta cells for programmed cell death, aka apoptosis. So it all starts with having a perforated gut or like a permeable gut. And if you can prevent that from happening in the first place, then even if you do have bovine milk or have some other protein fragment that comes from a different source, as long as there's no permeable gut, then those protein fragments will get fully digested and then the ones that you can't completely absorb will just end up in, the, in, in, in your poop.